So what I'm going to do is an infiltration test, and it's basically a test to see how permeable your soil is to moisture. And the more permeable, the better. So, um, and it's because permeability, infiltration, is directly correlated to the amount of organic matter and basically the soil biology that you have. If you have a high amount of soil biota, you have a whole bunch of pore space, your soil can always take more water. And that's a beautiful thing because we're irrigators, so we like to use our water as efficiently as possible. If you're in a rainfall area, um, there's an old joke <laughs> I would hear among farmers and ranchers, and it's taken on brand new meaning. Now, you know, it'd be, I'd hear two people talk at the coffee shop and one guy would say to the other, hey, how much rain did you get? And the other one would say, oh, I got about X amount of inches. But now the cool thing to say, if you're in regenerative agriculture, is to say, I got every drop. And that means you had no runoff. It all went into the ground. And that's a huge deal for taking care of soil biology. So I'm going to do an infiltration test here just to see, get a pulse on how much water my ground can actually take and how fast it can go in. And we'll talk about it a little bit after I do the test. This is, we're coming into, I guess, our fourth rotation on this grass. You can see there's just a lot of thickness to here. The weight of the grass is actually folding it over. And um, I'm going to compare this. Today's August 17, and I'm going to compare this to another piece of ground. Uh, another ranch that we just started organic practice on, just started a, an adaptive grazing practice on just this year. And um, we, <laughs> we're able to graze it for the first time starting this week. This has been grazed four times already through the course of the year. The random plot generator. This is a soil infiltration test, okay? And what it does is it just measures how much uh, infiltration the soil has. And what that means is how fast water goes into the soil. And the standardized testing method is to use a six inch ring. This is made out of very light well casing that I just cut myself and just put on a Sawzall, some saran wrap, a graduated cylinder water bottle that has graduations on it with 444 milliliters of water in it. And you just, uh, it's a very simple little test. And it's kind of, it's actually beautifully elegant. So all you do is you spread your saran wrap over your little piece of well casing. Careful that it doesn't rip. And uh, rip it off the box, set it into the bottom. I've pounded my well casing in about two to three inches. Now I need a stopwatch. And you know, every phone on your clock function has a little stopwatch. So we get it ready to go. We pour our 444 cc's of water into the saran wrap carefully so it doesn't spill over. And it is in there. And we hit start on our stopwatch and we carefully pull the saran wrap out make sure it all goes in and we're measuring time now and the water is gone in nine seconds it's completely in the soil and you can see um, our sward is very very green here it's not dry um, at all and dried out and droughty um, it's been a while since you, we've run a pivot over this probably several days and just in case we have an anomaly here. I thought what we'd do anyway is run another one real quick and just uh, kind of see if that soil will take another inch of rainfall in a matter of seconds rather than minutes. So we'll do that real quick. Okay, 17 seconds on test number two. So, you know, we've just had the equivalent of two very quick rainstorms, each bearing an inch of rain. It absorbed the water on this very, you know, grassy, very lush looking 
piece of ground here <laughs> very, very quickly. Okay, boom, we're done. Stop. Okay, that was 40 seconds. So you can see we're definitely increasing, but that's okay. 40 seconds is still a wonderful time. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna see why that soil was able to take on all that wonderful water. Pop it out and we'll see what, what is going on down there. And what is going on is we don't have dirt, folks, we have soil. And remember, this is volcanic ash. It's almost bentonite, bent, bentonite clay, extremely clay soil. And you can see there's still a lot of macropore space in there. You're seeing a lot of glomulin caused cl uh, clumping, which is an indicative of mycorrhizal presence in the soil. Fungal, fungal presence is a uh, is very clear sign that you have um, higher forms of life using the soil. You know, that means there's not only bacteria, but fungi, protozoa, um, all kinds of arthropods, worms and all those cool things living in this soil because it's very clumpy and has tons of airspace remaining to receive water. Now let's go right next to it here and dig a tiny little hole in the area not affected by my water. And look, in case you thought the ground was super dry, I still can make a ball out of this clay soil. And it was able to take three inches of rain in just about a minute of time. And what is this telling you? It's telling us that we have abundant soil life here and we have resilience even in the face of drought. Worst drought year on record for this county uh, since uh, 127 years, we still have very green pastures despite the fact that we're not seeing any rainfall and our irrigation is minimal. Okay. Off to the next stop, I think. So here we are on this newly rented ranch we're running. This particular plot of land was irrigated um, the same time difference as the last piece we just did on Alder Spring headquarters that had those pretty good soil infiltration rates. So we'll do it again right here on this rental place. Uh, been subjected to continuous grazing for um, probably 100 years. You know, this, it is August 17. This has not been grazed yet this year. This is all the growth we got. I just showed you a piece and it's now so thick that we have a trouble walking through it and you definitely can't see soil. Here I can see bare soil everywhere. So the exciting thing about places like this is that we have nowhere to go but up. <laughs> Three fifteen on the first pour. Go. Cool. Okay, now we might as well go get a beer. We'll turn this place into an organic matter powerhouse. It just takes time, but we need them to do it. They're the workers here. There's 435 willing workers there, and they will change. They will single-handedly change this landscape. So I will say too that rest periods are so critical. What we find is in the drier rainfall areas of our range where it's seven inches of precip, rest, air, rest periods go as much as 2.5 years. We'll graze a given meter in about probably 10 minutes over 2.5 years time, give it 2.5 years rest again, come back for another 10 minutes. I mean, that sounds insane, but it's actually what's really happening. On a place like this, and we're gonna get 40 inches of rainfall on here using irrigation we'll be able to get this down to about a 30 day rest. We'll be able to get this to regenerate to that standard just because we've added water. 
But places where we don't have water, we find that we need much longer rest periods and much shorter duration, much higher intensity. And that's why we do it all on horseback on the range. And that's why we can do it with polywire here because the duration of grazing is longer, the rest periods are shorter because we've added water. Okay, so we just finished infiltration number two. This one was 12 minutes and 28 seconds. We did a third one on Alder Spring headquarters. It took 42 seconds to get the one inch of water on the same column as those other two. Are we gonna try a third one here? No, because we don't have enough time in the day. So what I am gonna do though, is I'm gonna dig a hole here and we're gonna take a look and see what the soil looks like underground as compared to what we had on Alder Spring. There we go. Now, you can see tremendous differences already right here. It's just a soil cannonball, okay? Back on headquarters, we had uh, just tons of pore space. And here, we just basically got a piece of fudge chocolate cake. There's a little bit of aggregation here on some pear roots, see that? That's a really nice effect right there. So there's hope, we already have life in here. We just don't have what we had on the other ranch. You can see this soil is also lighter. It's because it's volcanic ash uh, foundation is showing through and there's not a ton of organic matter. Most of the color in this soil right now is coming because I just soaked it. I'll show you what it looks like without soaking. See, soil's a lot lighter and just a lot of dusty crumble, not much holding together. When I shake the roots, they come clean. And guess what we have here? We have quack grass roots. And how do I know that? Because they're sweet when you taste them. It's too bad quack grass didn't figure out to put more sugar in the stem, put it all down in the roots. But anyway, that's the difference. That's the difference of regenerative grazing versus continuous. And it's just all underground. And what's manifested above ground is basically a story of what's underground.